Is this the next wonder battery? G'day. From the Aussie with the Google Voice. This is the Solar U channel. And I design electronic stuff. I've worked with various lithium cells. LCO, LFP and lithium titanates. I've designed chargers and BMS controllers for all three. I've used LFP as house batteries, recently LTO in the solar ute, and LCO cells in various projects. So, earlier this year I happened upon a YouTube of GMG's graphene aluminium ion battery. I immediately saw the potential. I was very excited. I am not a battery chemist. But this is what I've gathered so far. No lithium. No cobalt. No rare earth metals. The constituents of GMG's aluminium ion battery. 3 quarters graphene. 1 quarter aluminium chloride and aluminium foil. That's all there is. Clean. Recyclable. The beauty of this battery is that the components are so abundant. Aluminium is the most abundant metallic element in the Earth's crust, and the third most abundant of all elements after oxygen and silicon. The graphene is manufactured by a low-cost process developed by GMG. Natural gas is used as the feed stock, add a bit of electricity, and GMG's special process, and you produce graphene and hydrogen. One giga joule yields approximately 15 kilograms of graphene. To give an idea of what this looks like. A 9 kg LPG tank we use on our barbecue is about 417 megajoules, which would yield about 6.2 kg of graphene. So, while aluminium ion batteries is not new, the guys at Queensland University have developed the secret source using GMG's graphene. The problem which the UQ guys have sorted out is that the aluminium chloride ions are quite large when intercalating into the graphite layers, which in this case, the cathode. So these guys worked out a way to widen the interlayer spacing and form nanopores into the graphene cathode. So, this increases the intercalation of the aluminium chloride ions into the graphene. Basically, it is this additional process which increases the energy density of the GMG aluminium ion battery. Now, on to the battery specs and performance. GMG states an energy density of about 150 watt hours per kilogram. This sits just under that of an LFP cell, but double that of a LTO cell. Now, what excites the GMG guys is the power density. 7000 watts per kilogram. This relates to upwards of 60 C charge and discharge rate. This power density is exceptional. This cannot be overstated. This exceeds all the lithium chemistries by a long shot, even lithium titanate. The power density is more like that of a supercapacitor. These charts gives us more insight into the battery details. The top chart is the charge, discharge chart. The C rate is approx 22 C first. It shows a very consistent performance over the 200 cycles. Second, it's 22 C. GMG states this has a nominal voltage of 1.7 volts. Here we can see the charge voltage is 2.4 volts with a cutoff at 0.5 volts. The plateau area seems to range between 2 volts and 1.5 volts, which corresponds to GMG's 150 watt hours per kilogram. It would be very interesting to see a 1C chart. The lower chart shows capacity versus charge cycles. Crazy high C rates in the order of C rate of 50 and 70 respectively. 2000 cycles and no signs of degradation at fantastic C rates. Hopefully GMG will do some longer term cycle tests, could this rival the lithium titanate cells for longevity? This chart also shows coulombic efficiency. This indicates the efficiency of charging the battery, to discharging the battery. It comes in at the high 90s percent. So, this gives us a pretty good glimpse of what these cells look like from an electronic point of view. There are still details and specifications not yet evaluated or released to fully evaluate against the landscape of available battery chemistries out there. We know the energy density with respect to weight. But, it would be helpful to know the energy density with respect to volume. As an example, this is important when considering a battery technology for a phone, or a car where space, or volume is more important than weight. What are the extents to the operating temperature range? It's been stated that low temperature is no problem. That's great, but we look forward to that being quantified. 
I actually expect it will look like minus 20 degrees Celsius to plus 50 or 70 degrees Celsius, but we won't know until someone does the test. We know that we should cut off at 0.5 volts or above. But, what happens to the battery if we discharge below 0.5 volts? Will the battery be permanently damaged? Also, at what voltage is considered maximum charge voltage? And, what are the consequences of grossly overcharging the battery? I expect it would just boil out the ionic electrolyte. In that case it would just pop its container and fizzle a lot but I'm just guessing. Further to this theme, what happens when physically damaged? What happens when short-circuited? Again, this chemistry is much safer than lithium chemistries, but I'd still like to see a video of these tests. Does the GMG graphene aluminium ion battery need a BMS? Battery management systems. Their main job is to monitor cells, watch that they don't go over voltage or under voltage. Different battery chemistries need them to a varied extent. As an example, lithium cobalt chemistries particularly need a BMS otherwise it could cause a fire. I'd like to see a 1C charge, discharge chart to have a better idea of whether these cells need a BMS. There appears to be a fair voltage margin at either end of the curve which could allow these cells to be used without a BMS if the string count is not too high. And now, what is it going to cost? I am using Google as my source on prices, so if I make a mistake please let me know. I am going to quote in Australian dollars. At the moment the Australian dollar will buy about 71 cents in US dollars. So if you want USD number, just multiply by 0.7. In terms of battery cost, we know that aluminium is cheap. The current price is about $1.60 per kilogram. Aluminium chloride should be even cheaper. Natural gas in Australia is about 10 Australian dollars per gigajoule which yields about 15 kilograms of graphene. So, raw cost of graphene should be about 66 cents per kilogram. We can see the raw cost of materials is dirt cheap at about $1 per kilogram. So, raw material cost of $6.70 per kilowatt hour. Now we do realize this doesn't include patent cost, license fees, transport, electricity, labor, plant and equipment and so on, but it does indicate that it could easily undercut LFP batteries which are currently being sold retail out of China for just under $100 US per kilowatt hour. Wouldn't it be marvelous if we could halve this cost? These batteries do appear to be of the next generation of battery development. Many of the features and specifications are quite exceptional. Given these specifications and the promise of low costs, these graphene aluminium ion batteries should replace all of today's batteries with the only exception being lithium cobalt cells where long range is required. But, we need to exercise some caution. The cells have only just escaped the laboratory. I look forward to following the progress on the production of these cells, particularly pouch cells. Maybe I'll even be able to sample the goods myself. Well, if you've come this far then you've done well. So, from the Aussie with the Google Voice, please subscribe, give the thumbs up, and ding the bell. Thanks for now.